It's a long time ago, I had to do some line boring on a truck dump hopper. And this was a machine that took the trucks at Red Dog Mine and dumped them on their side to dump all the material out instead of having dump assemblies on each of the trucks. They just had a platform they chained them to, threw the trucks over on its side. The holes that the uh, ends of the rams were in had self-aligning bushings and those self-aligning bushings on some of the rams had broken. They decided that they had broken because the holes were all worn out where the bushings fit in, which was a reasonable reason for them to be broken, that there was hammering going on in there. So we had to do line boring on it. This is outside, it's middle of winter. It's varying between, I think the coldest was about 48 below and normal a lot of 20 below. I was on the night shift on that job. So I would have got the colder part of it and uh, Al was on the day shift. Um, actually, I initially started on the night shift on that and uh, for some reason they sent Al down and since he was the second in line working on it, they wanted to change me to days and put him on nights and I'm like, no, 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 I will stay on nights. You, you go, go on days, Al. This is fine. This is fine. Okay, but the interesting thing was some of the little things about doing machine work when it's actually cold, everything's cold. Of course, your micrometers, and this is just the first one I happen to pick up back here in the measuring tool area. Um, you got to have it where you can get a good feel even with gloves on. Because uh, at 40 below, while you can for a short time hold on to this, you don't want to. You want to get to where it's so, generally we cleaned them off, and I don't remember if we used a Teflon spray or graphite or nothing, but I know we didn't use WD-40 like I usually do on these because it was too thick. It was gumming up and you could feel it being just a little bit hard to turn. You could turn it, but it didn't really turn smooth and nice. So, um, and I, I buy a lot of these cheap calipers and I know from around here, uh, we throw them around, use them for rough work. Around here, those things will usually cut out somewhere around 20 degrees above. And the Mitatoyos we were using at that time, I was surprised. They were good just round to zero, maybe five below. They actually, but at 20 below, no, no readout at all. And we didn't have any uh, manual calipers. So what I'd do, I'd just use the caliper just as a slide scale, because that was all I had. I didn't have a veneer or anything there at the shop. All we had it was what the company provided. And so I just used them as kind of a veneer to get it within an eighth of an inch or something. As we're doing this job, and, and, and we also had, did have a pickup sitting there running for warm up all the time. So I'd go out, I'd set up a cut that might run for 15 minutes. I'd go jump in the pickup, warm up in the pickup, and then range my next cut. The other thing that was kind of um, not a real good deal about the whole situation, and they, they don't use it anymore. They use different style, style of trucks now. On the drawing, the whole size, it was like, it was for the pin, the pin size. And anyway, it was calling for 50 thousandths under the size of what the inside of the bushing was. And I was sure that it was meant to be 5 thousandths under. You know, it just made no sense for it to be 50 thousandths because they're complaining about it breaking apart because they had a 16th inch of movement that had accumulated. Well, if you start with 50, you're not doing anything. Um, when we got down, to, after we built everything up, we're machining new shafts making this, they insisted on not getting hold of the factory that made it to see if it was a printing error. I think it was a printing error, and I really think that machine from day one was made with 50 thousandths of extra clearance in it. I think they were all that way, and I think that our rebuilding made it just the same defect as it was when it was new, which meant it was only, they, they replaced it in a couple years anyway. So overall, uh, it didn't matter. Um, but it was just one of those things. I couldn't get anybody to go and find out what the, you know, if this was. And I knew it had to be. Uh, being an older, wiser, senior, uh, person and even within the place I was working there. I worked there for several more years 
Um, I got to where finally it's things like that where you know that this shaft should have five thousandths instead of fifty thousandths. I don't care what the drawing says. There's nobody else there that could use the mics other than me and Al at the time. You know, we're the only ones going to use the mics and tell whether or not we're wrong anyway. So, you know, same condition again, I would give it the five thousandths clearance that I know it needed instead of fifty thousandths. But I was true to the drawing and gave it the fifty thousandths at that time. And uh, like I say, they scrapped it in a couple more years anyway. But it was kind of interesting working in the cold. There are a few things. When you're doing that, yeah, make sure that your mics and all your stuff are the same temperature if they're steel. Now, if you're working at a different than standard temperature and you have your steel mic and you have an aluminum piece that you're measuring, now that aluminum piece, that brass piece, they have different expansion rates. So you have to start actually doing math to figure out what size for what temperature those need to be. It's not just a matter of being the same and making sure everything stabilizes together. Uh, you have a big advantage when it's steel that way. And most of the time I'm machining good old steel. That's, that's my main thing. Um, I like aluminum too. It's just not my mainstay. <laughs>